Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. This is the fourth video in my series of Should You Move From a PC to a Mac. We're taking a look at that today on this Mac Mini. The three previous videos will be linked in the description below. The last video I just shot was all the pros. I've now spent several weeks with this computer. I've played around with it. I've done email. I've done, I've watched videos. I typed some documents. I tried editing a video. I have played some games on this. And these are some conclusions I've come to. The last video was the pros, everything I liked. This one is the cons, everything I don't. Now, I don't want to be all negative, but this video is going to be all the things that I don't like. So if you've been thinking of moving from a PC to a Mac, if you've been looking at one of these, I want to talk to you about what you may not be happy about. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It's a very personal choice, and I understand that there's different strokes for different folks, but I want to tell you about what I don't like. The first thing I don't like is the fact that the game library on Mac is so incredibly limited. Now, honestly, I knew that going into this, but even knowing that going into this, I was frustrated by what did and did not work, even what I thought would work. First of all, you've got three basic groups of games. You've got games that claim no support at all, games, games that claim perfect support, and games that sort of kind of say they will work. The games that say they will work, for example, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, it's right in the Steam list, it runs, it plays fine. Um, Tomb Raider, the 2013 reboot of the series, it's in the Steam list, it installs, it runs, although the performance is terrible because of the hardware included, but if you had better hardware. But then you have other games that claim support. I tried both World of Tanks and World of Warships both of which have what's called Mac wrappers. They're not natively maybe Mac programs, but they both have a download on their website that says click here for the Mac version. That seemed reasonable to me, so I clicked them to run them. They never worked right. Um, I messed with them. I went to the wargaming.net forums, and it turns out that they have wrappers to run the Windows version on a Mac, kind of, sort of, except the wrappers have been broken since a recent update, and they haven't been fixed yet. And the conclusion I came to is unless you have official support from the developer with a native Mac version, you are just in for a world of trouble. And then, of course, you have all the games that don't claim any support at all. I have played Guild Wars 2 on here. I've played League of Legends on here. It does have stuff that works. And then there's the vast majority of stuff which doesn't. If you were a gamer, if you want to be able to sit down and play games, if you like playing games, I would not recommend switching to a Mac. Because while there's plenty of things to do, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, League of Legends, and I suppose if those are the only games you ever wanted to play, okay, they work fine. All it takes is for you to go, man, all my friends are playing Overwatch, or all my friends are playing The Division, or all my friends are playing whatever, and I can't. Well, yeah. Now, it is true that you can install Windows on this in a dual boot configuration using Boot Camp, and of course, if you boot into Windows, then yes, all those games will play, although not really on this hardware because you don't have a dedicated graphics card, but putting that issue aside because there are Macs that have dedicated graphics cards, Why'd you buy a Mac? I mean, if you're going to do that, you just now you're now. First of all, you have to buy a copy of Windows, and then you got to fight with it. Just buy a PC. Just buy a Windows PC. If you want to play games, I don't recommend Mac. What else don't I like? Well, this is an interesting complaint regarding this specific machine because most Macs nowadays come with solid-state drives. This particular Mac Mini comes with a hard drive. And it turns out there's no built-in way to defragment a hard drive in Mac OS X, or at least I couldn't find one. If I missed the obvious, post it in the comments below. But I did Google search, and there, it, it turns out that there's third-party programs you can buy that will do it, but you have to put some effort into it. You can't just run it and let it run in the background like, you know, you can't run it on your system drive. You have to demount it. Um, why can't you defragment the drive? Well, I saw a bunch of words on various web pages. Oh, but Mac does the Mac OS does a better job of not fragmenting files in the first place. Okay, fair enough. I can believe that. Oh, but Mac OS uh, segments the files and spreads them out in such a way so that uh, it's not as much of a problem. Okay, it's a different file system. I'll just choose to believe that on the surface. 
Here's the problem. No matter how good of a job it does, it's never going to be perfect. Use this for a couple of years and that drive is going to be fragmented unless you do nothing with your computer, in which case it's not really an issue. But if you install lots of programs and then they update and the updates are what's going to kill you. Um, I have had this for a couple of weeks and already Adobe Creative Cloud and Microsoft Office have had large patches to update programs. There's no way it's going in and changing the size of large files. In fact, the Microsoft Office update took over half an hour to run. It was a big update. And there's no way you're updating all those files without fragmenting something. I mean, it just, it's, it's going to become a problem over time. And the fact that it doesn't have built-in defragmenting, I find to be incredibly frustrating. That being said, if you own a Mac with a solid state drive, then this isn't an issue because you don't and shouldn't defragment solid state drives because they write data randomly across the drive anyway due to their wear -like leveling mechanisms. So this is really not a big issue going forward, but if you're thinking of buying a Mac Mini, well, it's something to be aware of. Speaking of the Mac Mini itself, now, you'll note that was not a long list of complaints. When it comes to OS X, I've kind of run out of complaints. Games and the lack of built-in defragmenting are my only real complaints. Otherwise, there's many things I like about this better than Windows 10, or Windows in general, quite frankly. I'm not even knocking 10, I mean, just Windows in general. OS, OS 10 here is more user-friendly to new users. I can see why people like Macs. I can see why a non-technical person, now I like Windows because I've used Windows for 20 years. I get my bias, I completely understand that. But I, can, I imagine that my mother, for example, would actually enjoy using this more than her Windows PC. This is friendlier to a non-technical person. So we're done with the complaints on I really don't have a lot. I, I think that if Apple would sell OS X, or license it, I guess you call it, for say 50 bucks, or even $100, I think, they would, I think they would sell 100 million copies. I think a lot of people would buy this to install it on their PC. My main complaints, my main con is this. Now let me separate this comment out. This comment, these comments I'm about to make are not related to MacBooks, MacBook Pros, iMacs, or any of that. They're not sitting here. I'm talking about the hardware that's in front of me. This machine's missing two things. It's missing a quad-core processor. It has a dual core, and it's missing a solid-state drive. Why? Because for the price point, it should have them. There's no excuse for it not to. In 2016, Apple sells this for $700. That's their, their if you go to apple.com, this is $700. If you go into an Apple store, it's $700. Now, when I'm filming this, it was $650 on Amazon. And if you do want to buy these, I recommend you go to Amazon and buy one because you save $50. Apple, um, Amazon is an authorized seller. It's directly from Amazon. Go buy it there. It saves you money. That being said, for that price point, it should have a quad-core chip and a solid-state drive because you're not getting a keyboard, a mouse, a screen, or anything else. For that price point, you just get the box and nothing else. This has, well, hang on. Let me show you why I think it's too expensive. Yes, I know it's a Windows PC. About two weeks ago, I reviewed this computer. This right here is an ASUS M32 CD desktop computer for $375. It's not quite half, but it's close of the price of the Mac Mini. Let me run down side by side the differences between these two. First of all, they both have dual core processors. They both have two execution units inside their processing cores. They both have four threads. They're both hyper-threaded. The Mac is 2.6 gigahertz and it is a fourth gen chip. The M32 CD from Zeus is 3.7 gigahertz and it's a sixth gen chip. So this is two generations newer. It is 1.1 gigahertz faster and it costs almost half as much as the Mac. Yes, I get it, hang on. It's a big, huge tower. This is a cute little mini computer. I understand if that's important to you, fair enough. 
putting that issue aside for a moment, they both have eight gigabytes of RAM, except the Mac cannot be upgraded. That memory is soldered on there and it's not changeable in any way. The ASUS M32 CD can be upgraded to 64 gigabytes. 16 is cheap. You can go to 16 gigabytes for just $30. That's very inexpensive. The fact that you can't spend the $30 and make the Mac 16 gigabytes, I think is a huge mistake. Storage. They both have one terabyte of storage. They both have a one terabyte hard drive. Neither machine has a solid state drive, but I can forgive the ASUS for not having a solid state drive at the $375 price point. However, the Mac Mini has got a 2.5 inch 5400 RPM notebook drive that is very slow. The ASUS has a 3.5 inch 7200 RPM hard drive that is triple the performance. Random access time, random uh, read performance of the ASUS is almost triple the Mac. If you try to open three programs at once on the ASUS, it will happen miles ahead of the Apple. Now, if you only do one thing at a time and you're a very casual user, it won't matter so much. But the more you do with your computer, the more the differences will step into play. Otherwise, they're basically the same. They both include Wi-Fi, which is the uh, AC wireless. It's exactly the same. They both include USB 3 ports. The ASUS does include a DVD reader and writer, which the Apple does not. And the ASUS comes with a keyboard and mouse for nearly half the price. If you can get over the big honkin' tower and the fact that it comes with Windows 10 and not OS 10, I wouldn't mind the 700 if it had a desktop i5 chip giving it a quad core and if it had a 240 or 480 gigabyte SSD, this complaint would completely go away. If next year, they or this fall, they come out with a model at the same price that has a quad core and an SSD, this complaint goes away. I think it's too expensive for the hardware they're giving you. And personally, I find this to be a big complaint. Now, I mentioned before, I mentioned before that this comment does not apply to MacBooks and iMacs. Most MacBooks, I think all of them except maybe the entry-level MacBook Air and the most iMacs, not all of them, have solid-state drives in them now. And that removes a lot of my performance complaint. Price? You know, I, I don't want to do a detailed review in a complaint video, uh, my, the con video for this, but I'll just say this. I understand why some of those machines cost more. The 27-inch iMac has a 5K display and it's probably the most gorgeous display I've ever seen. It's beautiful. I, have, I, don't, I don't own one, but I do live ne next to an Apple store. I did go over to the Apple store and I played with a MacBook Pro and I played with an iMac 27 inch. It's gorgeous. Okay, fair enough. And it comes with a quad core chip and it comes with better hardware and it comes with a keyboard and mouse. So fair enough, I can respect it. It's still a little expensive, but it's not outrageous. The MacBook Pro that I played with, a 15-inch MacBook Pro with the Retina display, my God, that was a gorgeous display. It was beautiful. How thin and light that machine was, it was very well made. It felt very precision made. It was extremely light. And from everything I've read about the battery performance, the battery performance of a MacBook Pro is second to none. That's what I've read. I haven't used one. So even though I think it's outrageously expensive at $2,000, I can understand it. If you travel all the time, if you want a machine that you're constantly carrying to class around a college, or if you're on an airplane every single week, you know what, a little bit of a premium to have an ultra thin, ultra light, fast, gorgeous display. Okay, I get, I get that. What I don't get is buying a desktop for $700 that includes such limited hardware in 2016, especially when 240 gigabyte solid state drives are creeping up on 50 bucks. Now, can you put an SSD in here? No, this is a sealed unit that cannot be upgraded. Yes, I know there are videos showing the hard drive being replaced by a solid state drive, but you have to completely disassemble the unit, including using the, the Torx or Torx or however you pronounce it, security screws. Um, you completely void your warranty. 
don't don't do it. If you seriously are in that department, go buy an iMac with a solid state drive. So my comments are about this machine. If they will release one of these with a four core instead of a two core chip, and if they will release one with a 240 or a 480 or a 500 gig SSD at about this price point, all of my complaints about price and performance will go completely away. Because as you will see in the Mac OS X performance video that will be coming up next and linked in the description below, it's not great. Uh, at least not compared to some of the Windows machines I've shown. If you've watched my Windows performance reviews, it's just night and day difference. So, I hope this was helpful to you in seeing what my main complaints are. To summarize them, um, lack of games, lack of defragmenting on hard drives, and too much money for too little hardware. That's my biggest complaint. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't. Remember to subscribe to my channel. It's the big huge red button down there. Uh, that's how you get updates to future videos, such as the upcoming OS X performance video. Now, uh, questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, those go in the comment section below. I would imagine somebody has something to say about what I just said. That's okay. By all means, fire away. Let me know what you think, both positive and negative, about uh, my opinions and my viewpoint. I do recognize that my viewpoint on the hardware and its relative cost basis is, to some extent, a personal opinion. But hey, that's my personal opinion, and I've shared it with you, and I hope you find that useful and informative when making up your own mind as to what works best for you. As I say in all my videos, if you find my videos helpful, if you like my entire channel, if you want to support me and you want to see me do more videos like this or other videos, use the links in my video description below to support me. I will be eternally grateful. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.